I had some time to make another video, so I thought I'd go right ahead. In this video, I'm talking about this really cute little uh, antique telescope. If you've watched some of my other videos, you will know that antique optical equipment is a uh, passion of mine. That mostly stems from the fact that I have really terrible eyesight and that was kind of what started me on this course. Anyway, the telescope. I bought this uh, it's about two weeks ago and it's, it's, it's a really cute little thing. Um, it's about, I think it's seven inches long when it's closed and it's about 18 inches long when it is opened. It is brass with a wooden barrel and it was made in England sometime in the late 1700s, early 1800s, I think sometime before the Victorian era. So that'll be sometime in the early 1830s, 1820s, 1810s. Uh, possibly older than that, although I'm not entirely sure. Anyway, this telescope is a two-drawer pocket telescope, typical of the kind made during the very early 1800s, and uh, I'm going to give you a little tour of it. Now, what uh, distinguishes this telescope from one that is newer, so one that is, say, Victorian rather than Georgian, is how, is how it's put together, how it's made, uh, the various features on it. And uh, I'll just get a typical Victorian telescope to compare it to. Now, this telescope is from about 1890, 1880, 1900, around there. And you will see that while they're about the same size, uh, how they're made and how they operate is fairly different. Um, there are some parts which are similar, uh, others are very different. Now, I'll start with this just because it's easier. Victorian telescopes had removable lens caps. You just yank it off and here you have one that slides back so that you can look down and then extend it, close it, like so. And then inside the telescope all the lenses screw together so you can unscrew them and uh, blow out the dust clean them all that kind of stuff pop it back in very easily same with here you unscrew that and the lenses are very simple there's nothing uh, complicated about them, you just unscrew it, clean it, blow out the dust, wipe it down, put it back together. And Georgian telescopes are rather different. So if we have a look at the other telescope, you'll see that. The thing I love about these telescopes is how easy they are to put together. Um, another thing is how they made the cap. Here, it swings back and forth. As you can see with a screw, uh, that's also something that you'll 
notice is different in a minute. So this is the Victorian one, which is about 110, 120 years old. This one is Georgian. And one thing you'll notice about this is you don't have a pull-off cap. You have what I like to call a guillotine shutter. Uh, you have this built-in lens cap which screws over the lens and to use the telescope you slide this up so that you can see through it. And I call it a guillotine or a guillotine shutter because it acts like a guillotine. Uh, I think this is a really cool feature. I don't know why they don't uh, have this on telescopes anymore. I think it's a really neat feature. Uh, because the problem with this is that if you drop the lens cap and it rolls off a cliff, you're stuffed. You'll never get it back. This, because it's permanently attached to the telescope, can never go missing. Uh, you will find a lot of Victorian telescopes like this, and the lens caps are always missing. Uh, it happens a lot. Whereas this, it still has the original lens cap here, and then on the other end, here, instead of a uh, lens cap secured with a screw, which pivots back and forth, this is simply sliding up and down like that. So again, uh, very different, uh, earlier technology, earlier design, and then that just screws in like that. Another thing that is different is, if I unscrew this, you will see that the lenses are not set in with uh, threaded rings. On the Victorian telescope, all the lenses uns have their own little rims and you can unscrew them all and uh, take them out and clean them and replace them if they get broken, uh, all that kind of stuff. Here, there's no threads. There's nothing around here. What they used to do, and even if I unscrew this, there's nothing there uh, which you can unscrew to take the lens out. Uh, in the Georgian era, in the 1700s and the early 1800s, what they used to do was something that was rather simpler. They would just get the brass and they would set the lens on it and they would spin it like on a lathe or something and they would turn the brass rim over the lens and basically just set it in there uh, which is really cool but the problem is if you break this you can't replace it because there's no way to remove the lens and once you've removed the lens there's no way to put another one in <laughs> so you're pretty stuffed uh, which is probably why they stopped making them like that uh, which is one way that you can date them Anyway, a bit more about the telescope itself. This telescope was made in London by a company named Dixie. Uh, that is the company of C.W. Dixie, which was established in London in 1777. It's still going today. Uh, they don't make telescopes anymore. They make uh, spectacles, which is really cool. Very famous company. They made optical instruments for Winston Churchill, they made optical instruments for Napoleon, they made uh, spectacles, magnifying glasses, uh, telescopes for uh, the royal family, they made them for Ian Fleming, they made them for the uh, Qianlong Emperor of China. Uh, that would have been back in the uh, late 1700s, uh, if I remember my Chinese history, uh, the reign of the Qianlong Emperor. So yeah, that's uh, it's a very interesting telescope, and it's uh, made by a very famous company. So I was really excited to get this, and uh, it's in great condition. Um, I polished it, I broke out the brasso and gave it a scrub to polish all the brass, get the grime off it. Uh, you may wonder why do you, why do I bother to polish these things? Two reasons. One, if you don't polish it, 
Uh, the tarnish can damage the brass. Uh, let's see if I can find it, like here. Because this thing is 200 something years old. The more tarnished it is, the more the tarnish eats into the brass. You can see it's starting to pit here. Um, and then the other reason I polish it, other than to make it look nice, is to make it work better. Because when the tarnish builds up on the barrels and on the draw tubes, um, it traps gunk and dust and grit and uh, it makes the draw tubes very stiff. And you do not want stiff draw tubes on an antique telescope. All it takes is one wrong tug and you'll break the collar. The collars are these things here, the attachment collars. And if you break that, you're stuffed. You'll never fix them. So to ensure that the telescope lasts for another 200 years, uh, you have to polish the draw tubes and you have to fill them with oil, uh, pop oil on them, and uh, wash out all the grime so that the tubes slide back and forth. Like that. Like that. So that they are not damaged by uh, over enthusiastic pulling. Anyway, that's my uh, little chat about the latest telescope in my uh, collection. And I hope you enjoyed the video, found it interesting, found it entertaining. Uh, if you want to read a bit more about it, uh, about this particular telescope, then you can go to my blog, have a look around. I'll leave a link in the description, and if you're even more interested, then you can go and have a look at some of the other blog posts that I have, or videos that I have about uh, telescopes, opera glasses, uh, binoculars, that kind of stuff. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.